I'm not some need for feeling ATM or and constantly it. talking isn't also communicating either. First thing that comes to my mind is like, does this person hate black people? Maybe I should not interact with this person. Growing up in an abusive household, I, I didn't have a foundation for like what proper love was or proper support or kindness. You need people in your life that will also call you out for when you were being toxic. Friendships come and go. Friendships and sometimes they come back. And they come back. Exactly. To begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and the Wadamanagul people of the Darug Nation, whose land on which we record today, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders listeners with us today. Thanks, Inez. Today's topic, we really just wanted to delve into the world of friendships and concept of friendship, what strong friendships are, our journeys with it um, as well, and just different areas that relate to. To start off with, Inez, what's your journey been like in terms of friendships from when you were young up until how you view friendships now? We moved around a lot as a family, so I never really had that childhood friendship does anybody have like childhood friends anymore <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I never had that I've never had childhood friendship and then when we came to Australia I had a few friendships here and there but it wasn't really until high school that I ended up having friendships but also with the friendships there was a lot of like trauma so I didn't know how to like navigate and I was definitely oversharing with a lot of people like none of those friendships really lasted. I have, I've, I speak to some of them and I follow them and like post a little heart on their Instagram. As I've stated in previous episodes, I got up to year 11 and then I had to leave, went to year 12 in like a vocational school, like a tape school. That's where my friendship journey really started. Like I lost a lot of weight and then went to that school. People started to like me more. Mm, interesting. 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 Beauty is currency. Yeah. It gave me a lot of confidence to just go out there and yeah. ended up making a lot of friends. And I I was one of the only people that had moved out of home and was throwing a lot of parties. Gosh, so many parties. I am so sorry to my housemates. Um, (laughs) I threw parties like where police were called. Somebody like hot boxed the laundry. Somebody fell through a wall. I wish Uh, I knew you during this time. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I knew you. No, I feel like, yeah, my 19th birthday was, oh my God, yeah. And then there was a stripper at that party. Yeah, I was like, If I have friends, I'm going to show them the best time in the world. The world win. And a lot of my life was about partying and going to the club. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, from there, I started dating my ex. And then I had a few friends from the TAFE. And then he had friends from like his high school as well. And then as we started dating, our groups kind of came together and they kind of became like a a core friendship group. It's fun to have a group of friends. And I never really had that before. That group was definitely like the main group, but then I found people through volunteering or other house parties, just like hobbies that I was doing, going on dates and meeting their friends and et cetera, et cetera. So I definitely expanded my pool, but they were still the main friendship group. But I was like, I just don't feel comfortable here. And now, I, yeah, as I said, like you could, you could see like from when I was partying, it would always be about like quality. I want everybody to like me. I want to have the most friends, the biggest parties. Everything was like big, big, big. I have fewer people in my life, but each of them are so quality. And I know that I could call them at like 3 a.m. and each of them would pick up. Uh, so it's not a bunch of people, but it is everybody that I really, really care about. And I just want to invest as much time into them. What, what is your <laughs> friendship group being like? So I definitely have seen my concept of friendship and friendship friendship groups really changed over the years and I would say that I was someone who was open to connecting with whichever group like I I did have like my main circle of friends a lot of those friends like you know came from my primary school as well Uh, I guess like that group kind of stayed the same pretty much the entire of high school you know sometimes you have people drop off here and there group is like now like I'm still quite connected to people that I um, am friends with in high school however I would say that my group isn't as cohesive (laughs) as what it as what it was but my my big thing with friendships always was that I can't be friends with you and I'm not going to be in a friendship group with you if you don't respect my family circumstances, if you don't respect where, who I am and where I've come from and the things that I've gone through. Yeah. Um, and that's made, a, that's been like the biggest thing in terms of friendships for me, because I'm totally fine to be friends with no one. If, if like that, if there isn't anyone who can respect the stuff that I, you know, how my life is and how I have to navigate friendships because of that. Yeah. So I had my school friendships and my, but which is my main group. And then I had family friends connected within like the Nigerian community. And then I had, you know, friends, friendship groups within like 
my church and that sort of thing. At this current stage, I have a very small circle of people or friendship like friendships that I know I can trust this person I think it actually is just really cool that like I have close quality friendships with people in different parts of my life like I what is what are those significant qualities that you want in a friendship and I want somebody who will stand up for me truly I think that's pretty high up there mainly it's because I've just been let down a lot in my life and I think I hold a different significance to my friends. You know, I don't really have a family to really fall back on. Friendship is the most important thing to me besides me. (laughs) If I do like a mental catalogue of everybody that's really close to me, it is people that I know would stand up for me. People that are very honest with themselves, especially. We can call each other out and it's not, it doesn't really get into a conflict. I don't have time for people that haven't accepted themselves. Yeah, I just need people who like to have fun. You don't have to have gone through something horrible to be my friend. <laughs> yeah. But uh, th- there is that distance. You know, there's people who maybe don't understand inter- intergenerational trauma, have had no idea of, you know, structural oppression. When I talk about my trauma or my mental health, it's going to be dramatic. It- it's not like our lives are dramatic. It's just, it's just intergenerational trauma. That's literally what it is. Well, people grow up in poverty and then they have intersectional issues of gender and then of race and then of class. I, I-, I don't want to be friends with you if you don't have the space or the willingness to stand beside me and fight for people like me. Not just me, but like, I just want my friends to stand up for human rights. I, I think that's actually where a lot of the basis of my friendships, my strong friendships are. Just not wanting to deal with people that were ignorant to my experiences you know if you if you are someone who can't understand that my life involves very different circumstances because it covers different intersections of our society and you, if you can't respect that work with that I honestly don't have the time like I don't have the energy really a lot of the friendships that I have now that I know that I you know I, I genuinely hold dear to my heart have that foundation joke about similar things and and different traumas and pains and and know that you know you can still support each other like I've noticed that a lot of the toxic friendships that I've had are the ones that suck me dry and don't allow me to express my pain in the way that I want to uh, and and make me feel like somewhat like guilty for even bringing it up or even you know laughing about things (laughs) 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 then you can see in this space for the guys who are listening (laughs) going off what you said I think it's been difficult for me particularly you know Mm. when you're speaking about like family friends and having like people of color in your group that's never been me (laughs) Like ever, Uh, ever since I've come to Australia, most of my friendship circles have been white. I never, I never saw it as an issue, but I also didn't really have any connection to my Indian heritage. Even recognizing toxicity didn't make sense. Coming from such an isolated, toxic environment, I couldn't recognize when people were being toxic in friendship because I didn't really have connection to make. And it, I've definitely learned yeah. that now. But I was like, well, if these people aren't beating me up, then they must be good. Mm. And it sounds bad, but I'm like, and they get to drink and they party with me. That's amazing. <laughs> it's only been probably in the last like three or four years where I've actually have friends that are people of color. Yeah. Which sounds awful, but it also is because I've slowly grown into myself and realized how much I hated being Indian and how much I disconnected from it. I I brought this into my social circle. And I think because I didn't see myself as Indian in these circles, it was Mm. never like a key part of my identity. And so my question to you, Angelica, is do you think that you can be friends with people that are more privileged than you in terms of circumstance, in terms of class? What what are your thoughts? I definitely think I can be friends with people who are more privileged than me in many different regards. And I say that because I myself am more privileged than people that I am friends with as well. I started to think about it in in the opposite way of the people that I feel like I am more privileged than, are they struggling? to be friends with me um, am I actually being like a genuine friend to them and I think um, you definitely you definitely can be people have to be able to recognize that privilege in a way that is not just recognizing it and then just like not like acknowledging acknowledge, it yeah <laughs> yeah exactly be able to realize how that can impact the other person actively conscious about that in your friendships and how you navigate stuff like, an, an example I can give and, and that's been a big part of my life is that 
I am officially a, a really a carer. Um, I've always had to care for my siblings, but in particular, my younger brother has a lot of needs. That's been a big part of who I let into my life because I want people to know that I don't have the gift of time sometimes, or I don't have the yep. gift of, of being able to go to certain places because my energy is, in, is, is, is also put into him and his life and making sure he's okay. I've had this said to me before, you can focus on your carer roles another time. Uh, that's not how it works, sweetie. <laughs> and I'm like, can like, how dare you? Like, there are some certain privileges that you have that I just cannot even entertain because that's just not my life. And you know, if you recognize that and respect that, you know, that you, we can still navigate this friendship even with that, even with that difference in privilege, and that's then then that's cool with me. Like my sexuality as well, mm-hmm. I've really had to acknowledge that being someone who identifies as straight, knowing that I the society benefits me, I don't face the discrimination, and recognizing that, and knowing that, and and still respecting and giving them space to navigate places, and, and me still be respecting of their situation. I when I definitely was struggling financially. And I did have friends who were more privileged and a little bit older and had more money or had better jobs and wanted to go to like fancy bars. And I was like, I can't do this. Or I would go and like, I'd order a Coke. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I still wanted to like be around them. Like they would acknowledge that. And maybe once in a while they would shout me a drink here and there. That's also really hard to navigate because you want to spend time with them and you want to go out and you want to go on this big winery tour, but you have like $20 to your name. But if they're not willing to like meet you on your level, And I think that comes with with a lot of privilege is that, you know, they need to meet you at your level as well. I I can't afford to go to a fancy bar. That's fine. I'll come, I'll order a Coke. But next week, let's go on a picnic. And if you value me and you value our friendship, then you would be okay with doing that. But if you're frustrated by that, or if you're frustrated with, you know, Angelica, you're not like giving enough time or and as you don't have enough money, it's like you don't value me. You just value me as like a position in your life. Exactly. I'm not some need for feeling ATM or an object of your validation. Like I am a person. And if you value our friendship, then you will navigate that. Acknowledge their privilege, but also navigate the circumstances of their friends who maybe aren't as fortunate. And then I think that also comes down to being friends with white people. It was um, one of our <laughs> one of our beautiful listeners uh, messaged us and they said, how do you be friends with a white woman as a person of color? And I think that that's a great question. You know what? I feel like my experience with navigating friendships with white women has not being as extensive. My issue is always just being seen as like that black friend. Like I just like I I have this struggle with with that concept. However, the friendships that I do have with white women, those friendships actually are quite a lot of them have formed because we have similar interests in terms of like gender justice or like, you know, in, in just different areas, like in my, in my field of study as well. And so conversations about privilege and advantage that they may have are ones that I have had quite openly. And I think that's how I've been able to navigate these friendships. I hadn't have had, had conversations about specific areas of privilege with them. I don't think I would have... I don't think I would actually be friends with them. There are times where I do get quite frustrated. <laughs> I don't want to be like this jealous person, but when I do see this, you know, people get like certain opportunities that I would have loved. So happy for them. But at the same time, it's like, I still feel some type of way about <laughs> about things when you've been struggling. You might be struggling for it take you like twice as long to get yeah. there. Or it could just be like trusting that people aren't going to use your story, uh, you know, when they're talking to others like you know again going back to that being that like one black friend that someone could have what's to say that people that I'm friends with that are white haven't gone and talked to other people and been like so I have this like black friend and like she's gone through xyz races and I'm did it like and used me as like a story and like a I'm not racist card that's it exactly and for me that's where I where I also struggle because it's like you just don't know what's what's being said about you behind closed doors or in in different places you fear that you are just being taken advantage of and you don't even know it should I just have this expectation that I am being taken advantage of just to make it make it easier for myself that like some people are just actually genuine I feel like all the people that I have that are white women in my life are genuine 
at the same time you just can't help have these feelings how I try to deal with them is having conversations but then I recognize that that's a privilege in itself because some people just don't want to talk about that like yeah. at all like in in friendship groups or you have some people have like you know big fear about bringing that up you're seen as too aggressive or you're complaining or you're or you're dramatic. it's like a, yeah a dramatic like you're you know something in another episode where someone was like there's always something you know there's always something with, yeah. Yeah, within like you know navigating spaces with white women it's like if you do complain or bring something up will they be like oh, again then there's that part of me that's like why do I desire for this person to look at me so favorably is it coming from a place of like internalized racism that I do have or internalized like lowering myself a common I don't know if you go through this but um at least within like the, the black community um code switching Yes. Is, yeah is one big thing and I feel like I do this so much like and code switching is when you make you, you know you change how you talk or what you do or how you behave um in, in particular it's really how you like talk with one culture what we with one group compared to another group um I find myself code switching um <laughs> with my tone of voice and like yeah. how I and my mannerisms I'm not either less intimidating or less like over the top to white yeah. women that's quite problematic and even like my 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 friends that are that are black will sit, like they always say like ah oh, you got the white woman voice today <laughs> like you <laughs> like you've got like you know you yeah. um you're acting in a way that is like prevent them from seeing this yeah. side of you that is like that african side of you just that other energy like that is is a part of you you're like lowering that down for their own satisfaction and i think i don't have the energy to code switch that much yeah. anymore so i'm for just sure. going to be who i am and if you don't like that then I guess we just can't vibe in a, in terms of a friendship. If I'm code switching in friendships so often or like to a point where it's like I'm I'm really really different to who I am yeah. um just to make you feel better then that's a problem. I think it's important to set your boundaries and be selective. Not just the white women but the white men and women that are, are mm. really really close to me and I love them with all my heart. The reason why those friendships work is because I think one, they don't take themselves too seriously. If you don't take yourself too seriously, you also are willing to learn and reflect because I feel like the, the white women and men that I've clashed with the most are the ones that are really strong on their identity and their ideology yeah. uh, and that their positions on certain things. But the friends in my life, they, they care about human rights. They want to be better but also they know that like life is all kind of meaningless at the end of the day. And mm. all they want to do is just kind of have fun and like support each other through that. From that, it's like, if you call them out on something, um, they'll be like, no, but I am not a racist. Uh, but you don't have to be a racist to be, do racist things, you know? And, and I feel like nah, most of the time they're kind of the same thing. You can, yeah. you can do a lot of racist things, but then you're like, I'm not a racist, but they're like, you you do racist things or that you benefit from, you know, structural oppression. So maybe, you know, these friends might not be racist or sexist, but if they don't call it out or if they don't understand it or and, and at the bare minimum, are not even willing to have that conversation with you because they are so strong on, I am not a bad person. It's just not, it's just not going to work. Quite frankly, I think you need to have people who uh, are open and flexible and are willing to learn because mm. um, yeah I think we said in our lessons to our younger selves episode th th one of the most important things to both of us is just the, the fact that you're dedicated to lifelong learning and that exactly. never stops and it needs to be enjoyable and if these people can't come into your spaces and actually learn how how can you navigate that you know has that really impacted how you've made friendships as an adult, you know, Ooh, and, yeah. and um, like how have you gone about navigating the space of making new friends now that you have certain boundaries? I honestly can say that I haven't had a lot of difficulty making friends. I think <laughs> I, I am just, I'm just a social person and not that I'm in performative in a sense, but like when I go to a party or when I'm going to a dinner, I like, I know i like tell stories make sure everybody's included, um, compliment the other person. I don't think that's like a performative thing to do. I just want to make sure that like whoever I'm around feels really valued. And I feel like because I haven't felt that way in relationships and friendships and family as well, I go out of my way to make sure that everybody else is like that. And I feel like I'm, I'm a warm person when people are around me. 
And also, I don't care that much. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, like if they go out to a bar or, or a club um, or like see somebody cool in a bookstore, they're not going to ask them out to a coffee or people do it in romantic sense. They're like, I ask for your number. I do it a lot or when we could go outside is like, if I went to an event and I really like somebody where they talked or like their outfit or I just go up to them like, hey, that, do you want to grab a drink sometime? Or do you, like so many of my friends can attest to this. Like I will constantly just be going on like <laughs> random friendship dates with people because I thought they were cool. And yeah, not all of them have like lasted because I don't take myself too seriously. I don't take life too seriously. And I also am not scared of rejection at all. I'm like, what's the worst mm. that could happen? Somebody says no. And <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, what's the, what's the problem? And I have a lot of faith in myself because I, I know that I'm a good friend and I know that like I'm, I'm fun to be around. I think most people are, are open. It's easy when like you're traveling, but I just imagine that I'm on holiday all the time. <laughs> you know, you have like the holiday spirit in you uh, where you just want to be friends with everybody. I think I just carry that with me. Have acceptance in yourself that you are an interesting person. Well, hopefully, if you're listening to this, I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> but once once you know you're not afraid of rejection and you have more faith in yourself as a person and as a friend, I feel like it, it is easier to make friends. And once you do that, you can recognize what your deal breakers are. And yeah. for me, it's somebody that doesn't care about human rights or social justice. Like, pe- I think people don't understand is when people say, I'm not political, that's a political view in itself. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Is exactly. why why would you want to change a system that already benefits you? You know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's important that people respect my boundaries and they also know that I've been through a lot and I yeah. can't change any of that. You know, it doesn't make me any less of a person. Yeah. What about you? How have you made adult friendships? <laughs> you know what? I sometimes I actually don't know how I've made friendships. <laughs> <laughs> in you know, you know, like I, I there's people that I just for some reason have just vibed with like I I don't know I've I've seen them at uni I would say I'm quite different to you because for me when it comes to friendships that I've that I have made as an adult I there's always been an element of fear a really big element of fear and um, in particular when they're not African and this is how strong racism can be is this person a racist do they hate me coming up to them as a black person I will literally be staring at someone who's got like the like the coolest ass dress like and I want to just get to know this person because like they just seem like they would be like someone I could vibe with first thing that comes to my mind is like does this person hate black people maybe I should not interact with this person I don't think I've actually really found it hard to make friends like overall like as in this in in this um as an adult because of the situations that I've just been in without me having done like different volunteering things being engaged in the workplaces that I am or social groups that I've been a part of like I don't know uni and that without them I wouldn't have been able to make friendships as an adult I definitely would have struggled even more deeply with that I'm, I'm grateful that has been my life that I have been put in places where I can have gotten to know people and then when I'm in those spaces that I have been able to get to know people, I, I find myself to be someone who's just like, hey, I just like people. Like I just I just wanna I just wanna know who you are, understand your life or just be some some connection for you or to you. And that's what has made the process of making friends in different spaces quite easy. How did I even land in that position where like I just there's just people in different places that I vibe with that I can call my friend and then literally none of them are connected to each other in these different like activities or places that have just made me develop friendships with people and I think I'm someone who can be is easy to get along with I hope so (laughs) (laughs) and I get my energy and my ability to function every day from other people but it's a but it has to be with something in place or I have to have been engaged in something you, like like you be in a cafe and just be like that person's cool I want to talk to them <laughs> like and even when you mentioned friendship dates I was like oh my god like like what is like you know what is that like it's like I don't think I've really ever like experienced that spontaneously I've only really experienced that when I've been in something and been like oh yeah I, I you know I really like this person like I've sp- and I speak to them because yeah. we're doing stuff together and then it just blossoms from there it just blossoms from there and then we have our <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we have our friendship day at the same time though I, I have put a focus a lot during this time as I've grown up 
uh, you know, grown into adulthood to get to know and connect with people more that are from my cultural background. Cause I just, yeah. I did realize how much I was like isolated from that. Like, you know, yeah. I, I want to learn that for myself. Like I want to really understand how to interact with people from different groups. As you grow older and the more you start to accept yourself, the less you try to please other people by going to places and doing things that you don't want to do. So if yeah. you're automatically and everybody similar to you is also doing the same thing. You will naturally gravitate towards people that do want to do the same things, do want to volunteer, do have the same hobbies, et cetera, et cetera. And then from there, you, you find people that a specific dedication to something that you are also dedicated to, you know, connecting with people from your culture. I kept saying to myself, I just want more South Asian female friends. How am I going to navigate this? Because I feel like I'm very like whitewashed, whatever the heck that means. I felt like, oh, if I go there, I'm not going to be Indian enough. And But recently, I have been part of like a podcast group then I from there I found like an online like just just a group chat on Facebook with a bunch of um, South Asian women these women oh if any of you are listening I adore all of you so much Uh, you never really made me realize how much I was missing uh, of all these like common experiences especially like being South Asian in Australia. That's a very like specific experience. I think, yeah, with first gen, et cetera. When you connect with people and you share your experiences together and we we all teach each other stuff and just have a laugh. And it's just, it's just so, so, so beautiful. You might find that you are missing something and you couldn't even really vocalize it. And these women yeah. all have like a little piece of my heart. <laughs> I, I love, I love hearing that. And I, I definitely second that being able to connect with people that are from your, your heritage or just your cultural background is really what has kept me going in terms of friendships there's that one group that I have that are my Nigerian fam and I yes. just like you know without how without having them in my life I wouldn't really have understood myself as a black woman supported yeah. <laughs> in this very very Eurocentric and individualistic society we're in so- I feel like when it's like childhood friends or, w- or work friends, you, you see them all the time and it's easy to have a friendship with them. I mean, you can have different levels of intimacy with friends, I think I want to say, is mm-hmm. that you can have friends that you speak to on a weekly basis, but then you can have friends that or you haven't seen in like two years, but then you pick up the phone one day and it's like, it's fine. Particularly with movies and what we've been taught, like best friends and friendship groups and friends are. That's not always going to be the case. Important, meaningful friendship is like a garden, you know, you have to water it take out the weeds uh, you have to maintain yeah. it and put effort into it like you would a like a romantic relationship there are also friends that you both know that you both care about each other and you're there for each other you don't need to talk every day and I think that's fine too really understand what friendship dynamic works for like the both of you or the few in your group and work with that and I I define myself as the notorious shitty communicating friend (laughs) (laughs) I am the shitty communicating friend who just does not know how to communicate properly when I do connect with people like I I it's meaningful right but I'm just not the best communicator and I feel like there's friendships that get that and then there's friendships that have worked with different levels and different types of communication and connection um, and like you said it doesn't have to be like every day come up some of the most strongest friendships I have are the ones that are with people that I don't communicate so regularly with because like you said as soon as like as soon as you call up it's just banter yeah. and it's just um and constantly know, talking isn't also communicating either that's it exactly banger yeah bars yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly with with friendships that you don't talk that often particularly during corona it's it's hard to keep up with friendships and, and constantly do zoom calls and, and do this this kind of stuff i think people have to be given the space just be themselves right now if, if you have trust in that friendship and love them and support them and you feel that you like truly feel that and like your your gut and your heart. I feel like that that's a good mark of like an independent, strong, loving friendship. I agree. Maybe that's not true to everybody, but I think it is for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm on the same page with you on that, but I know for sure there are people where that isn't the case. Yeah, yep, and that's to- and that's totally okay. Yeah, for sure. I guess you just um you know this year in particular though, I think patience in terms of friendships and understanding in terms of friendships is yep. something that I've really. S- s- um, started to learn and 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 acknowledge and value because yeah. we we just this year has been like a, a whirlwind for so many people yeah at least from people that I've interacted with like they have a problem with putting everyone on the same measure of intimacy like you've yeah, got to like sure. where I just feel like it, it's everyone we're inherently so different to each other that it's just virtually impossible to have every single one of your friendships on the same intimacy intimacy level as yeah. as others so yeah. there's always something to be to be conscious of communicating. Mm. you could be talking every day but none of it could be really meaningful you know you could be in a group of friends and 
you're surrounded by people, but you still feel lonely. You just really have to find what works for you. And, and you know, the, the patience and acceptance I have of, you know, not having people constantly like calling me or, or seeing somebody like once every week, that has only re- been quite recently. And I think for a while it was just, I was such a people pleaser in so many of my friendships mm. because I think, yeah, trauma also affects you. It's shock and horror. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, definitely growing up in an abusive household, I, I didn't have a foundation for like what proper love was or proper support or kindness and I found that I just was like if I make one mistake like something horrible will happen so I never really stood up for myself I never I just agreed with everything they were doing but you're also like not serving yourself and if you come from like a a dysfunctional home or or you don't have that foundation or that model for what you think a, a good friendship or or relationship in general looks like then you're you're gonna have trouble navigating that but you have to make those mistakes on yourself like on yourself (laughs) 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 you have to make those mistakes for yourself and you have to learn and you have to grow yeah and it's going to be hard at the end of the day as long as you really really vibe with this person and they are supporting you it doesn't matter how long you have been friends it just matters their impact on you and also friendships don't they don't have to last forever your friendships are different stages in your life you're you're constantly evolving you're constantly changing you're not the same person that you were so how can you expect those friends that maybe were on a superficial level when you didn't really understand yourself now that you're understanding yourself not everybody is going to come along to the next level with you and that's fine we have to be okay with that that knowing that the friends you have now you may not have them in 10 years but you have to make the most of the fact that they're in your life now so yeah as we've been speaking about drifting apart we could also speak about friendship breakups and conflict somebody on instagram actually asked us how do you handle conflict when you hate conflict (laughs) is it possible is it possible with a friend in who is a toxic friend i don't love i don't like conflict to an extent because i don't like the side of me that comes out sometimes with it or with confrontation i actually personally in my life have had to deal with a lot of like anger management like the anger management stuff that I would go through was like it was it was actually not affecting like me physically like you know hurting anyone it was me physically hurting myself obviously I don't want to keep harming myself and hurting myself and and so I had to you know really deal with that part of my part of myself so when it comes to like confrontation and conflict I don't like when it gets to a point that could ever lead me to hurting myself I always have that like that fear in me but then on the flip side sometimes it is conflict that I just thrive off I'm almost sometimes happy it's gotten to that point where then I can like exert myself and what I want to say and and let it just be and like that's like you know if the friendship has to move on past this conflict then that's then that's fine I'm just glad it got to that point and I think I'm handling it better now in in my adult friendships yeah. don't think I've had to encounter that much conflict whenever there has been a conflict I've just let it pass yeah I lean towards letting it drift to be able to handle it but if it's something that is people are either saying something about me or making comments to others or and it's impacting other people around me that's where you know I draw the line I can't I, I don't deal with that well and I will confront I will have to speak to you at the end of the day in a year's time am I even going to dwell on this conflict again I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Depends the situation. Another thing that makes it hard, you know, conflict hard to handle for me is who I'm having the conflict with. Yeah. If I'm having a conflict with someone who's an, like a Nigerian, why I hate dealing with that type of stuff is because Nigerians talk <laughs> like, and it becomes like a bigger thing. Whatever conflict you're having with this one person is the whole community's <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. conflict. Don't want to be like the center of attention when it comes to that kind of stuff. Oh no, I was going to say, how about you? I don't know if I can answer this question because I love conflict so much. I will welcome it into my life so I can knock it down. Even when I do have conflict and maybe this can translate to our listeners question whenever I have a conflict that's usually not the start of the conflict Mm. it's usually little things before that that I'm not listening to in my intuition because I'm like something felt off or that conversation was weird or why do I leave feeling bad like you have to really listen to those parts not just like the major thing that's like glaring and staring at you but also listen to the little parts of yourself they're like "Mm, I don't think Mm. she was very nice to me in this conversation I think he actually was gaslighting me you have to listen to those because then usually that is what accumulates to the big conflict and then you like let it all go in that one to even avoid getting to that conflict number one is you know starting off with those like just being honest to be like hey you sounded really off in that call did I do something It, it takes time but it's also about learning about your boundaries your intuition and like recognizing when things just feel kind of off because i think if you hate that big conflict 
maybe you can handle the little ones every day. Maybe not always, but I think definitely it can, it can be easier. I also would try not to, because I would definitely be guilty of this, is speak to everybody about it, everybody in your life. Exactly. Yes. Like uh, That has gotten me into so much trouble. Important to go to people that are not connected to that person that you're having the conflict with. Uh, mm. you, def- you need some distance. And I think... It shouldn't be that many people. I think maybe three, four, max. I think it should be people that really respect you and you respect them. Yes. And if you wouldn't take advice from them, I don't think you should take criticism from them either. You just need people who will, will be honest with you. And also you need people in your life that will also call you out for when you were being toxic. Because sometimes you, when you are in conflict, you, you are the reason the conflict is happening. But maybe all your friends are yes people and they don't want to tell you. It's important to be selective about who you tell. Mm. And also when you are presenting the conflict to ensure you are not only presenting the parts that make you look good. Exactly. Present the parts in full. And, and you know, sometimes it's very clear when somebody is, is being toxic, but sometimes it's not. And I think it, it could be you, it could be them, but you need people around you who are going to be honest with you. If a friend isn't serving you and maybe you've had these little conversations of, hey, our phone conversation was off, do your own reflecting too after you've you know, gotten advice from people as well. Just sit with that and just sit like, is this friendship really worth all the struggle that I'm going through? And does the good outweigh the bad? And is the bad so bad, even if it's just happened once, that it's it's affecting my happiness, my identity, my mental health? You know, it could be one instance, but most likely if it's gotten to this stage, it probably isn't just one instance. But if they're affecting like your mental health or your happiness um, or your connection to yourself, then that person isn't really worth it. There are so many people in the world You will make friends again. Breakups are hard. Exactly. Breakups are hard. But, you know, as you grow into yourself, as you find people who you connect with, you'll be glad you let that person go. And if you are being the toxic one and you have friends around you who will keep you in check, you also have to recognize that and work on that. Um, Yeah. As we've been speaking about conflict, I also want to speak about how do you assert your boundaries? I think the example that we could use is, let's say you are having an awful day. So is your friend. And your friend has called you just to reach out to comfort as mental health, but you don't feel like you're in the capacity to really be there for them the way that you would. So Angelica, how do you think you would handle that? So I find this area quite difficult to handle because I like to be the person where I slice myself into into (laughs) 10 10 billion different pieces and offer each part of that to someone, but it's still like my full self. Like I I want to be able to offer as much time as I can to people and, and then, and have them, call or reach out or rant about whatever they they may need or knowing that I've I'm at least there for someone and making and making my doors open for them to reach out to me I feel like it's part of who I am and my person and just my persona my personality however however (laughs) I often find myself struggling to be the person who reaches out to others because I've made myself into this view that I am the one that you can sp- you can speak you can speak to me you can unlearn yeah. me. This year in particular has taught me to be very conscious about the fact that at the end of the day, if I am not taking care of myself, am I gonna have the energy and full capacity to care for people the way that I I desire? And if this if there's a friendship that is compromising that, that's a problem. Like yeah. that's a that's a very big problem. That's where I have to then set my boundaries with whether I do take those calls or whether I just tell that person I can't um, today, I can't speak or, um, and, and if they, if they feel two ways about it, then so be it. Like I have to still, I have to come to a place of really being okay with just putting my foot down and just being like, okay, even though I know that you're vulnerable, I I am also vulnerable too. I can't help you anymore. (laughs) then I can help myself if I'm at the same time though I find myself being that person regardless who can call me whenever message me whenever even though I'm shitty when it comes to responding back (laughs) I will still be there when I reflect back back in my life I I wish there were people like me who were supporting me in the hardest of times and um, at those moments where I needed it the most and that that's what I want to be for others but just recognizing that, you know, I can't do that all the time, 24 seven without caring for myself too. Similarly, I don't think I have that many boundaries when it comes to stuff like that. Cause I'm like, yeah. if you are having a bad day, I, and maybe I am too, I will put that aside for the one hour that we're having a conversation to be there for you. And then I can go back to whatever I need to do. But you know, if, if the conversation was going on for too long, um, I would just say, Hey, I, I'm really sorry. I really have to sleep. It, you know, if you want to, I'll, I'll be up before work. If you want to call me then, mm. even if you give people like 15 minutes 
I feel like sometimes that can be enough. Not that I've had this happen, but I can imagine people would, you know, say, you know, speak to your family or you have your therapist or you have lifeline, et cetera. That's not always an option. Also, lifeline is not exactly. accessible to a lot of people. Um, a lot of people with disabilities, a lot of people who are culturally safe. We have to be mindful of like support lines and how they're not always amazing either people's families sometimes will not understand you sometimes your friends are the only people that will really really understand you in this situation and you just want to vent to somebody you can trust not a professional not your yeah. family sometimes it's a friend if you can't give that person a full hour or their undivided attention if they really need you just give them like 15 20 minutes of your time personally that's what i would do mm-hmm. maybe that's not healthy for everybody but i think it, it it's not a binary thing i think i don't think boundaries are completely binary set in stone they can be i can be here for you but only for 20 minutes or I can be here for you, but yes, in the morning. I think expressing the boundaries would be setting the compromises in order to navigate through that. I think we forget we have the opportunity to give those alternatives. Being respecting as well, like there's some people who can really, regardless of the alternatives that you give or like that compromise, like you said, they're still very persistent. Is this persistence something that I should just just address and just list, hear them out in this moment? Or is it something that you're like, hang on, well, this person's not just respecting the place that I'm coming from right now with how I'm feeling or how much I can offer at this time. Just as we were talking about that conversation of conflict, is that something that can be like a a, a, a little thing that leads to a bigger conflict later later down the line because you haven't addressed address that or how that made you feel? I think we, t- we talked earlier about, you know, the concept of being friends with someone who's privileged, you know, is having time like a privilege like is having yeah and and, you know it it really is and sometimes I feel like there's people who forget how much privilege they've got with time compared to others or or and and then and aren't willing to come to a place like of that compromise which is such a beautiful thing if you can do that in friendships my god like I honestly like that's that that's something that is so important to a healthy friendship anyway so and as I guess I just wanted to ask you in your experiences with friendship have you ever been the toxic friend at all yeah absolutely I refuse to acknowledge that even though my intent was good the action was still horrible um, and I kept mm. justifying it because I, you know, I labeled myself, I'm a good person. I wouldn't do something like that. Or that's yeah. not what I meant. Either way, that person was still hurt by it. And then I refused to apologize. I just put so much value on me being a good person. And I was like, I could never do something wrong. I'm a good person. I care mm. about human rights. I care about social justice. I've been through trauma. Blah. Um, that yeah. doesn't exclude you from being a horrible person from time to time. You know, maybe in another way that I have also been toxic is maybe not toxic to other people, but definitely toxic to myself. I never really acknowledged what I really wanted and I expected people to read my mind. And then I get annoyed that they didn't live up to my expectation or do something that I asked, not communicating and then being annoyed that they didn't understand, which makes absolutely no sense. People aren't mind readers. You have to communicate your needs. Otherwise, you know, they're never going to be fulfilled. But yeah. What about you? Do you have, you been toxic friend? I think mine comes more from, the fact that I feel like how I behave in terms of communication with friends is what makes the friendship quite toxic and not not like really severely toxic, but and the, you know there's an element of toxicity there because I just I might be brushing people off, I might be not really paying attention to their needs or their this friendship, yeah. um, which is, is which is a relationship in a sense yeah. at times have felt like you know when you I think you brought up the word trauma at one point like feeling as if like oh well like you know I've gone through all of this stuff like it's you know this person should feel feel more compassionate for me rather than me me feel as compassionate for them and and those types of that that type of behavior starts to creep in and then I realize hang on that's actually quite toxic of me to be like that if that was the type of behavior that you know I had encountered from someone then I would feel emotionally drained and I'd feel quite I'd start to distance myself a bit from that person potentially so I definitely have been that toxic friend but to some I think to some degree really we've everyone's been toxic um in one way or another I think it's really hard to say that there isn't an element of that type of behavior within any type of friendship you've had but it's where it really develops into something that is extremely unhealthy that we always need to like, you know, take note of and, and, and pay attention to those warning signs. How do you feel sometimes <laughs> about the decisions that your friends make? And is honesty always the best policy with your friends? 
Oh my God. Yeah, I think that's a pretty hard hitting question. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that you are a friend and that you are a part of their life, but they have to live with the decisions that they've made and they can come to you for advice or support. But yeah, they just have to live with the decision that they made. And when you see your friend and you want to be as honest as possible, you also have to recognize the dynamic of that friendship. Are they open to honesty? Are they open to constructive criticism and if they're not then maybe honesty isn't the best policy like obviously you care about them and maybe some people need a kick in the guts but you have to understand like really where your friend is at that point whether you showing that you have good intentions and showing that you want the best for them is that really worth kicking them while they're down you know Mm. if if you are going to be really honest and you you have a feeling that they won't like what they're going to hear I think it's important to do it in a private space and in a relatively as good of a mood as they can be in at a time where they don't have something important on, like, you know, an important family dinner, graduation, job project. And maybe there always will be something, but I think, I think similarly like to a friendship breakup or a regular breakup, like don't break up with somebody on the day of their graduation. You could have waited one day, you know, like just, mm. just let people have their moment. Cause you know, if you, if they're going to associate that day or that moment, with you you can't do that to somebody i think you really have to see the dynamic pick your time and be honest if like if this conversation is worth it right now i'm like you i feel like you know if someone makes a decision for themselves you let them make that decision i for myself i do like to be honest with people i just honest in a way that is respecting i like to be honest about situations that might be occurring that i think will genuinely impact this person and impact uh, their life and but at the same time still recognizing that this person has agency to do as do as they please yeah. i always think to myself well if they make a decision that is in my eyes, a poor decision. Maybe for them, in their eyes, it's not a poor decision. And I'm the one who's not seeing that. I'm seeing it from my own lens and my own view of life. And and I just yeah. got to remember that I have to still be able to reflect and put myself in that person's shoes. So I guess like, you know, I, I'm quite receptive to when my friends don't like my decisions. In that moment, I do like it when people are honest with how they are viewing things. The most polite way that I give feedback is I just say, have you thought about blank? Because it's not... Mm. me pushing or lecturing or saying it's just asking like oh have you thought about how this would work uh, not not in a ac- like accusatory way in a way that like disenfranchises the agency be like oh have you thought about it and they say yeah. oh no actually and then you're like oh okay cool and then you just let them like <laughs> let them sit with the idea but i i had a situation where i changed everything about <laughs> my life in that year i broke up with my ex changed house started uni just so much like i just i was like i'm gonna turned my life around and I and got rid of lots of toxic friends and the last mm-hmm. thing that was left in my life was my job sometimes I'm very all or nothing but I'm like I've changed everything I need to change my job as well and my friend yeah. was like do you though like maybe you could just sit with the change but in my heart I was like I know maybe this is like an extreme thing to like change everything about, about your life even your job mm. again in that she probably thought that quitting with not a lot of savings was going to be a bad idea but I was like I have traced like faith in myself that I'm highly employable the job market is seems fine right now I'm gonna do it and then I ended up finding a job that gives me so much more money and is more fulfilling. So sometimes your friends may not like your decisions, but at the end of the day, you will listen to your intuition. Just as we bring this lovely conversation to a close, I just want to discuss what do you do when you feel like you're putting all the effort in a friendship? Also, how do you maintain a friendship? I typically really don't like those types of those types of friendships, but then I recognize that I have also been the person who's one-sided friend. Um, especially when I say like, you know, I'm one of those people who still is learning and coming a long way with how I I communicate properly with people and be frequent with like what I, you know, my communication. I have been in situations where I've been the person who is always there to listen. That person will not listen to me whatsoever. It's in my nature to still feel okay to listen to people even if they is so so one sided, but again, it sucks the energy and life out of me sometimes when I do feel like you know if I'm in a friendship for like a year and it's one sided, that to me is like very concerning because it's like, do you really actually care about my well being, about my safety? Do you care about like who I am as a person? Am I just a like yeah? Am I just a number to you? And I struggle with being able to put my foot down and say like actually bring it up and be like this is actually like not healthy for me I value you as a person but do you value me 
it'd be that they do, but they're showing it in a different way. But I guess I, I like when people explain that. It'd be simple things as even just like being grateful, like just saying thank you for things or just being, you know, you know, having just like li- just check-ins at least. We communicate a lot and like you, it's, it feels one-sided. If I, if at some point you do check in and be like, hey, actually, how are you going? Like that, that changes a lot for me. Like I will genuinely then yeah. see the good in that and, and still feel that this friendship might work. There has been times where that hasn't been the case. And for me, I just feel that sense of like shit now I actually have to like (laughs) address this do I really want to like yeah end a friendship that I feel like I've put so much of my time and energy into only now am I comfortable with being like I'm just not gonna I'm just not gonna engage with a one-sided friendship because it's not healthy for me but then I've also had to had to have to look at okay what is my idea of friendship that makes it one-sided because like you know for some people they say one-sided could be like you're the person who makes all the plans. It's like, I really don't care who makes the plans in terms of like meeting up. I, if I do it all the time, so be it. I guess it's more so like, how is that the time that we do spend? Is it value, valuable? Like, is it actually meaningful to you that you are engaging yeah. with me? Like there's no appreciation for like my presence there. Again, I just feel like a number yeah. Like in terms of like a friend, in terms of friend, like rather than like an actual person, sometimes just let those types of friendships just like drift away. And if they come back, that's totally, that's totally okay with me. But I find it really hard to, hard to actually address, address those types of, those types of relationships. But just if you're someone listening to this and you feel like you're in a one-sided friendship, like we've mentioned earlier, friendships come and go. Friendships sometimes they do, come back. And they come back. Exactly. If you feel as though that one-sided really one-sided friendship friendship is just not good at this point in time for you and it's just really draining the life out of you (laughs) and you feel unappreciated and you don't feel valued guess accepted by this person then it may be that during this time you just don't need to be as tight as friends or or maybe it could be that you know that time apart can actually strengthen that friendship and you might become friends again like in a in a way that is like respecting of each other and um the expectations between each other are actually reasonable i think yeah from being a people pleaser for so long i was putting a lot of the effort into almost every friendship Mm. and i wanted every person to be like my best friend and i wanted everybody to love me so much and i wanted to just be grandiose and i think it just comes out of like you know not having models for love and friendship that Mm. i kind of had to find them on my own and not everybody is meant to be a friend and that's very hard to (laughs) very hard to realize at least just asking friends like yeah as as i said earlier you know friend conversation felt off did i do something I'm pretty comfortable asking those things like throughout the friendship and I think the way you frame it is very important you don't come at it accusing that person of not being enough just ask them hey is everything okay have I done something I think maybe some people can find that really needy but it's important that you ask that question in a polite way I usually say like can I uh, I just want to give you the space to say everything that you want to say and just know that I'm here to listen probably the way that I've navigated that and also just being true to yourself and realizing not everybody has to be your friend you can let things go. Not everything has to be a dramatic friend breakup. Some of it can just, yeah, as you said, just let it drift apart. Uh, But how to maintain adult friendships. I think mainly it's just really being thoughtful. Even if you don't talk all the time, yeah, just calling them out of the blue or just saying, hey, I thought of you or, oh, I saw this book. I thought you really like it. Spend quality time with them. But if you can't do that, then, you know, just show them that you're thinking about them. Particularly with, you know, scheduling conflicts is a big one, particularly in adult relationships. Uh, if your schedules just can't seem to line up, try to organize a date that works for both of you as soon as you can to have like a plan to see each other at some point. And if not, then like a call or something like that. The power of <laughs> hearing hearing a voice is very important, whether that be in person or over the phone or through Zoom. Right now, especially when we're distant, you can send flowers to people's houses or, you know, send them like a little box of chocolates, like something like that maybe costs you like 10 bucks total. <laughs> And it, yeah. it could mean like the whole world to somebody. And any conflict that you have, um, you come at it with a very respectful, non-accusatory way. Make it very clear that it's coming from a good place and that you want to have this relationship and you want to work on it. Because I think people don't speak about that enough, that friendship is something that you do definitely have to work on. Exactly. And it's not an easy thing to maintain adult yes. friendships whatsoever, especially as we mentioned that we're continually growing and shaping into, into different people every day. 
like yeah. we're you know you know maintaining friendships along with our own personal changes that are going on is also something that be, can be quite difficult you constantly will always have to do like will always have to do just evaluating friendships as well where are you at with your friendships and maybe this might be odd to say but sometimes you might need to have a look at whether in your life do you need so many more people coming into it like that yeah. you just feel like you can't manage all of this all of these I guess connections you are developing like make sure that you have a look at you know who are those people around you that you're closest that you are closest to and the time that you are spending with them be honest with those people if you if you like to really find out where you stand with it with that friendship because I think it's always good at some point in time to have that conversation be like actually how is our friendship going and not you know you know honestly like how do you feel with with where we're at right now and it could be like the next two years that you have that conversation at least you've had that conversation with that person I'm learning to embrace the different types of friendships that come up in 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 adulthood and I and I and I love it that ability to connect to people even if it if it's if it's frequently if it's in even if it's just a message on Instagram like in all honesty like that for me brings me so much joy when I'm able to still feel that connection to others and check-ins with um with people are so important but also manage you know to maintain a friendship is also about managing your expectation within a friendship as well you know what is it that both of you are either wanting to get out of it or like what are you expecting of each other in this friendship as well we hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation about friendships there's so much more to this conversation and it'd be really amazing to hear your thoughts about friendships positive negative struggles amazing things about it you know things that you agree with and disagree with that's been talked about as well well we hope really (laughs) we hope that you um enjoyed it stay tuned for the next episode and stay engaged with us on our social media (laughs) (laughs) okay i've lost my voice but bye (laughs) (laughs) okay bye everyone (laughs)